big secret, there's a drought on, and there's no grass in the paddocks. And so I just walk along the side of the road, which is originally where stock routes all came from. All roads came from stock routes in Australia, and until they started putting highways in. So I just go down beside the road, so we just walk wherever there's, we can find grass, we'll keep going. I, I think drovers will, will be around as long as cattle are around. People who understand animals and like working with animals, technology can never, never replace that. I mean, they've got all sorts of things now that you can study them and put on them and click on them. Not worth a crumpet unless you understand cattle, like cattle. Because the cattle don't, you know, they, they don't make the advances that we think we make. <laughs> with all the technology, we think we're getting smarter. But it doesn't impress. It doesn't impress an animal. I don't know what happens in the cities. I don't know what they do down there. Like it's a different cup of tea altogether. But like I know that when I get up in the morning, I'm gonna go out and help to keep the beef on plates. Just tough. Yeah, there's not much easy going out here. You've got to sort of be able to handle a bit of roughage if you come out here. Not, most girls think it's all saddle club, but it's not. So that's why not many of us last. We just get up and keep going. Gabby, unleash hell. If I had a horse that, that threw me as many times as a motorbike, I would have shot it the first day. But as far as for poking along behind cattle across rough country, you can do that much easier on yourself on a horse. Your horse watches where he's going. You can watch your cattle, and that way you leave less behind because you're not trying to negotiate your way through potholes and across logs and that sort of stuff. Well, yeah, you were your own boss, but you're in charge of a million or millions of dollars worth of livestock that it's up to you to keep alive. And do the best job you can with them. It's very rewarding, nothing better than delivering a mob back to a sale yard or back home that are in prime condition after being on the road for however long. We've just brought the cattle down for the afternoon, their last couple of k's and where they've watered and put them in the break for the night. <laughs> Tell me about it. And that water's good too. Beautiful water. I've, I run into a bloke, he's, he's crippled up pension fella down there. Yeah. And he says, excuse me, he said, this water, could you drink it? <laughs> and I said, well, it's in a river, mate. Yeah. And he said, yeah, but could you drink it? I said, rivers, you know what happens? It rains, water comes out of the sky and they land and it runs in the river. I took him up to the, to the, to the truck, a little side tap. I turned it on and I said, here, have a taste of it. He said, oh, it's good, isn't it? He said, yeah, I've been thirsty all morning. <laughs> so... If I said you need to go and live in the city, what would you say? Mm, no. Where do you want to live? Here. Where's here? Um, Bill. <laughs> Let's live with Bill. That's <laughs> or if, um... Whoa, 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 whoa. If, go and sit down. you live longer. So, how hard's the drought been? <laughs> Uh, it's put me in debt that far that I'll be struggling to get out, but hopefully I'll get out. I turned 18, driving, in 1980, and there was a drought on. And since then, I think there wouldn't be two or three times that the whole east coast of Australia has been out of drought at the same time. I think droughts are a way of life now, I think it just played the cards on dealt. I don't know, I don't, I'm a, I'm a driver, I'm not a climatologist or whatever they call themselves. But as far as whether the drought's going to end, I don't think it is. I've got a little block down in New South Wales. Five years ago I had the decision to start feeding cattle or sell them. So I sold them and I went drove and working other people's cattle. My utes keep blowing up. So I come and grab the old honest one I know won't let me down. I haven't got to pay for it. I know it uses more fuel than a ute, but I haven't got to buy it. I've got it already. Just put the water separator on it, empty the water separator. The truck's been sitting for a fair while, so... That should go. That should go.
Yeah, with my block, you don't worry about left and right. You, keep, you can see up and you're not at the house yet. You just keep on going up. Yeah. Actually, have a look at these horses. I haven't seen these horses for a while. But so there's, there's the drought for you. We're feeding these things and they look like crap. Never seen that mere skinny in a life. And it looks like I've lost one. Yeah, anyway. Well, we'll head back up the house and have a cup of coffee, I think. Like with the dogs, they're working dogs. So when they get hurt, they're on compo. When they're old, they're pensioners. That's how it works, just the same as people. The only thing they don't get is long service leave. They just get to get let off the chain and go around again. This is Floss, my old pensioner dog. She was scratching the back of her ear and she burst a, a something or other, so they got that on there to keep her from, to behave herself. Look, we got 1,300 acres here now. And yes, it's only had to carry like the brood mares and, and stallions and very minimal livestock. Oh, but that was because we sold our cattle in 2014 yeah. because yeah. of the drought. We had no water. Well, it was my decision because I was here and I was the one battling with the circumstances. I was heartbroken. It had taken us so long to build up our herd. They were, they were mine. They were my cows. It was my herd and it had been something that I had wanted to do since I was a little girl. Having grown up in Sydney, you know, your animals are your pets and you don't want to see them starving, you don't want to see them thirsty and, you know, you do everything to keep them well. Well, it's the same on a property, but it's, you know, a hundred times that. And so not only were they our animals, but they were our income. And um, to make the decision to sell them, it had to be not just an economic one, but it had to be an emotional one. And, and I got to tell him I had to put them on the truck. I had to tell the kids. It's something that you go, okay, well, this has to be done, and you suck it up. But, you know, sometimes in the dark of the night, have a little cry into your pillow because, you know, like this last year. Sorry. Bill hasn't been home for a while and we've lost two horses. It's been really hard. <laughs> so, yeah. It's, um, see, I get to tell Bill these things and have a cry when he's home, but otherwise I just suck it up and get on with life because everybody else is going through this too. Oh, it's tough. He's away for most of the year. Don't really have him around to do any of the farm jobs that we need doing, so that gets left to me and Mum and Eliza. With the drought being as, the way it is, I'm going off to uni to study law, and so I'm not going to stick around for the family farm. It's not really any money in it. But looking now, like there's way more opportunities in the city. And I'm studying nursing, so the plan is to finish that and go into the workforce. I haven't used this truck since April, but I think I might have to clean the truck out. Cab before I go. Could be a good idea. I can't make a dog work. All I can do is, say, is, is teach him to come back when I tell him and the whistle to, to go is just, yes, it's all right if you go now. I let a dog work. I don't, you, you, you only ever let a dog work. You can't make a dog work.
love all my dogs. If I didn't love them, I wouldn't have them. So like you go, you out out west, and you can't get a feed for your cattle, and so the shires say, well, if it rains, if we leave a little butter buffalo grass, for instance, if it rains, only about three weeks, and you'll have something you can eat with that. Where if you chew it back to bear, you get all your erosions, and you're not looking after your country. So the rangers will go around and they'll do a vegetation assessment, and when that's too short, then they'll say, right, no more drovers coming through. Well, people down this road, none of them remember when the last drover came down. The cattle come first. The cattle have to be watered. The cattle have to be fed. They have to be put away before sun set. And they have to get out early. Like, if they, they're not going to spend all day behind the electric tape. But your cattle have to come first. And so after a while, you just get obsessive compulsive about your cattle. But you just got to have the right mental attitude. And if you've got the right mental attitude, the physical side will take care of itself. And I've always got the truck facing so that if I get up in the middle of the night, or if I need to get up in the middle of the night, I can see. When we're walking with one person at either end of them, we're watching them all the time to make sure we don't lose one. So at the moment, they're not worth much at all. Like, you'd pick up one of these things from anywhere from three or $400 up. Like, they're worth nothing. When it rains, and these things have a chance to build up in condition and, and they're right for the table, you're looking at around fifteen hundred dollars each, and there's a thousand of them. So you don't want to be losing them. So if they weren't locked up at the night, they wouldn't be here tomorrow. Gabby, she's been with me for a couple of years nearly, and she's a terrific girl. She'll get up first thing in the morning. She'll water dogs before she goes to bed. She'll water dogs, and all the way in the middle, she'll complain all day. But she's there every day. Now we need to have a sign out legally to be on the stock route. It also warns truck drivers. And the signs have to be 200 metres from the first cow in Queensland because it takes a long time to slow a semi down. And it's not till you've driven one you realise just how long it takes to stop one. Even on a dull road, I'll see 100, 200 cars a day and every car's got a horn in it. And they all work. I know because they prove it. And after a while, the, the cattle just get that used to it. Or if you've got a whip, you've only got to touch them with it, not even hurt them, just touch them with it. And they think, oh, he's got me. And away they go. So if you poke along back and forth on a horse and you, you get a little doughy fella goes to sleep, you just throw it over him and, and away he goes. The crack in it part, you don't, like after a while, you don't shift many cattle with the crack of a whip. Well, what makes a whip crack is you just get a little flip in it, like you put a little curl in, when it gets to the end, it'll flip. When it goes over that little bit there, it goes a lot faster, and that's what makes the noise, when, it, when that spins around as fast as you can. The old fellas used to say it breaks the sound barrier. I don't know if that's fast enough, if that's what it is or anything, but all I know is when it goes around like that, it gets to the end and it just goes crack. So what you do is just put your, put your little curl like that. Uh, we're just saddling up some horses and we'll poke down the end and put them in the yard for the night. Yeah. How good is this rain? Fantastic. Not enough of it. But there's not enough feed for us to stay here, so otherwise we're going to have to walk in the rain. <laughs> Actually, I wouldn't take a couple of them. So I'm stuck with this crap Yeah, because I don't care really much. If you wanted to get a good whip, you should have grabbed one before you left. If I wanted to get a good whip, I would have got the one you fixed. Oh, no! It's fixed. There's nothing wrong with it. It's back in the camp. I fixed it today.
a wet day, so a little bit of an early lock up, but that gives us time to sort of take a bit better care of our dogs and ourselves and that sort of thing. We'll all go out and have dinner tonight with John's older brother. So it'll be the first time I've had a real shower in a little too long. <laughs> a proper shower anyway. We got the shower in the horse float, but you get sick of that. Lost my best mate last night um, to a bait. She was a little dog that I'd had for 10 years, long before I ever went droving, before I ever had working dogs. Um, I had to get Bill to put it down because I couldn't do it. Yeah, bit full on. <laughs> It's morning. <laughs> A bit chilly, but that's all right. It won't stay that way. Uh, we'll catch horses and start to walk these cattle and get a bit of a plan happening. We'll um, count the cattle out. We haven't been able to get a count on them for a week, just because of train lines and bits and pieces. Then we'll run up. Gabby will head off with them and I'll run a water, go and get the water, run a water trough and everything down for where they'll be for lunch, um, give them a drink, and then probably do another couple of k's for where they go for the night. This is Jingle. She's about four. Which is your favourite one? Um, I want to say Flicker, but she's not the best horse to ride, but I've had her for, well, I got her the year I, before I got my little dog, so she's a good mate. I don't know, three-year-old me might be able to answer that question. I've always loved horses. I used to try and do this thing where I'd pick a different animal every year and it always ended up coming back to horses pretty quick. Everyone used to try and tell me I was going to grow out of it. Horses are the one thing you never grow out of. Do you want to go get these cattle out? The sun's up and the cattle, the cattle are legal for them to be out, so that's where they should be. We just counted a thousand. We're two over on the count. It's like pulling teeth getting them out the break. I know I've only got 998. I don't think I'd want to be here doing anything if I couldn't be on horses. If anything happened to me that rendered me never to ride a horse again, I'd fight that and I'd get back on. Couldn't stop me. We're just doing our 10Ks a day like we do every day. In a drought like we've got now, you've got drovers with cattle out on the road, eating just a bit of grass on the side of the road. It's amazing how a little bit of country and the numbers can be sustained on that little bit of land. There's all these different brands of meat, like Peter Hughes that's got this property, biggest Wagyu producer in Australia, I think, and Wagyu meat is something that they go for. Then you have your grain-fed beef, which is a marketing point, and then you have your grass-fed beef for those people that don't believe in the feedlot industry. I was just thinking this morning while I was running up the road, we've got cattle that are on fresh grass all the time, so they're grass-fed. 
And at the moment, they don't look too good. Like, I've only had them three weeks. I haven't had a chance to sort of build them up. But when they're fat, you think about it. They're grass-fed. They're exercised. And they're already used to travelling. They should be a premium for them, really, when you think about it. The tape is just a guide. It's got electricity running through it. We've got a little tester that's, that tells us there's 10,000. Whatever it is is going through that. That's really good. That'll give them one hell of a boot. That's a pretty fair shock. Um, don't pee on it. Um, and that'll just give the cattle a bit of guidance so they don't get caught in a pocket. Because cattle, they don't like being on their own. They like to be with a herd. And we've got a little dog leg there. So by putting the tape, when the main mob go over, everybody goes over together, nobody gets caught, nobody panics, and there's no drama. So how does it feel like when you get zapped? It's just like a big shock here. Come on, I'll show you. All you gotta do is just touch this. And probably best if you just wet your finger because the electricity conducts better when it's moist. We'll just see if we can just arc that out. And the thing about the electricity, they touch it, they learn about it. If they want to keep touching it, I did tell them it was on. Like they, they know what it's like, they know what it's all about. Everybody think cattle are like sheep, that they're all just exactly the same and they're all, you know. Like there is a reason they don't have sniffer cows at airports, they're not particularly bright, but every one of them are different. Every one of them have got their own personalities, and their own little agendas. And it's like getting up, trying to go down the road with a thousand schoolboys and thinking they're all gonna do the right thing. I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for taking on this job. on the road there, you know, he gets a great kick out of looking after a thousand head of cattle on a little bit of miserable bit of grass along the edge of the road. You know, it's it's a tough gig, but he gets great satisfaction out of making it work.